So good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak here and thank you all that I got a second chance for the presentation because, uh, well, yesterday it was a little bit tricky. We had a, a snowstorm and uh, the internet was, uh, internet connection failed, unfortunately. And I'm taking the opportunity to talk to you about ImmunoD therapy in autism and uh, to explain how it works in autism and uh, what it does. I'm uh, making a little uh, slope to uh, uh, um, our uh, experiences in cancer therapy. So what is the critical link between vitamin D and uh, uh, vitamin D deficiency in autism? Um, we know that there is something, but is there any evidence? Of course, there is any evidence. So what we know from uh, Cochrane Library, for example, complementary medicine has uh, 200, uh, more than 260,000 hits if you uh, just type in uh, complementary medicine. Uh, additionally, to traditional Chinese medicine, herbal medicine, micronutrients. So there is a big, big evidence um, in uh, complementary and micronutrients medicine uh, in research. And if you go to Cochrane Library and, list, uh, and, and look to meta-analysis and systemic reviews, you see, oh, what happens? So micronutrients are on position four, much, uh, much more uh, meta-analysis and systemics reviews have been done uh, than in infectious disease, cancer, heart and circulation and pregnancy and childbirth. So where is this evidence? Nobody is really talking about that. And if you look uh, to further research, we have more than 200 and uh, more than 200 uh, um, um, meta-analysis and systemic reviews in Cochrane Library about supplements. And uh, um, there's much, much more to talk about that. So at the end, we have a big amount of results, even if you look uh, to PubMed. And uh, um, what we know is that there is a link between autism and vitamin D. So if you look to the numbers, the percentage of, uh, of the population, 1988 to 1994, uh, there was a much higher level in vitamin D measured in the population than in 2001 to 2004. And additionally, the percentage in autis uh, autism incidence raised um, in the population. So at the end, there are hundreds of studies over the last four decades uh, have reported altered immune response in autistic individuals. And there is a large body of evidence that vitamin D plays an important role in this, uh, in this disease. So um, what we know is and this is from the federal uh, federation of american societies for experimental biology so this is not something that can be uh, can be seen in uh, um, uh, uh, broadcasting new paper so the effect of vitamin d is significant under substitution before and after treatment um, in autism so where is the link between vitamin D and autism? And there is a very, very good study from uh, uh, Saad and Al Atram from uh, 2017 showing a significant negative relationship between serum, vitamin D, and severity of autism. There is a significant inverse relationship between vitamin D and the frequency of dendritic cells so, uh, population in children with autistic uh, syndrome disease. 
Uh, there is a significant inverse correlation between vitamin D levels and the ABC total score and language subscale scores. And if you treat uh, uh, these kids either with uh, intramuscular administration or with oral uh, administration for about three months, you see a significant difference uh, in symptom score reduced to, uh, with the CARS and the ABC score. Furthermore, the studies suggest that the treatment effects were better in younger kids uh, than in older, older children. So the younger you start with it, the better it is. How does this study was performed? So it was a double-blinded randomized clinical trial with 109 children. Uh, the effects were assessed um, after uh, the supplementation of vitamin D. ASD patients were randomized receiving vitamin D or placebo for four months, and the levels of vitamin D were measured. And autism severity and social uh, maturity was measured with four different uh, uh, autis uh, autism uh, rating scales. At the end, ASD children generally tolerated the supplementation with vitamin D well, and the symptoms um, improved significantly following a four-month treatment with vitamin D therapy. So this is now evident that vitamin D is doing something good, and it is doing something good. The younger you start, the better it is. So the summary of the whole lit literature is vitamin D has an important role in the regulation of both innate and adaptive immune response. This is something that we know. And uh, affecting the immune system at multiple levels uh, is known for vitamin D. And this plays an important role in autism. The major target, vitamin D, seems to be the dendritic cells, but I want to take you on a little journey uh, and show you what is the evidence at the moment. Not only in our laboratories, so we are talking about immune therapy and a different kind of immune therapy, not modulating something, but giving the body that what he needs for acting himself. So let us have a little look at the players in this game. So in the center, there are the macrophages and the monocytes who can influence more or less all the other players like dendritic cells, neutrophils, platelates, B, T lymphocytes, mast cells, eosinophiles, neutrophils, and natural killer cells. So, um, the idea to create something like ImmunoD, which is patented at the moment, is, uh, was, uh, was the following. Um, we know that vitamin D is produced in the skin, but it also can be supplemented with milk, orange juice, with fish. And uh, uh, this, uh, this is... Um, let's say a preliminary vitamin D that we are uh, that we are taking in or producing ourselves then the vitamin D is converted in the liver and before it is converted in the kidney for calcium muscle bone and regulation of blood pressure and an end it there is another pathway going through the prostate gland through the breast through the colon and it is distributed into immune cells. The mechanism has been developed by uh, several, uh, uh, several groups, so including our group, and is something that I can't explain you here because I have only half a day to do that. <laughs> okay, but immune cells need vitamin D for about 200 DNA regulation, which makes the function of several immune cells, like macrophages, T and T cells. Let us focus on that. So how is the normal transport 
uh, of vitamin D in the bloodstream. So our normal model, uh, which is nothing more than a model and a hypothesis at the moment is vitamin D it has been taken in. This is a lipophilic um, uh, lipophilic uh, protein and therefore it has to be bound to D-binding protein to be water-soluble. Otherwise it can't be distributed in our bloodstream. So it is bound um, in the gut, for example, to, uh, to D-binding protein and in the skin. And then it is transported to the cells and there uh, inside the cells connected to the vitamin D receptor. How it goes in and what it, um, the, and what it does is, um, let's say, something else and something different, but it is discovered, at the, uh, it is more and more discovered. So just let us, um, let us take this hypothesis and say, okay, this is the transport system, how vitamin D goes to the receptor. Um, now we are coming to immuno D. What is immuno D? So immuno D is a, recumb a recombinant vitamin D uh, binding protein, uh, which is um, uh, which is then uh, added with a special sugar combination. This sugar combination has been shown to be the key into the lock of the macrophages and T cells in our immune system. So this immuno D, what is uh, shown there, is, for, uh, is the entrance into immune cells. And this is bound to vitamin D3. So the immuno D is a vitamin D bound to a D-binding protein, which has a special sugar combination, which is, let's say, the barcode for immune cells to take it, uh, to take it in. And at the end, immuno D is the first water-soluble vitamin D preparation, which is very important because you can take it in via the buccal mucosa, for example, and you are able to do experiments that can't, have, can't be done before because of its lipophilic, um, uh, lipophilic actual, um, um, actual uh, uh, solution. Immuno-D is patented and registered as a dietary supplement. It is confirmed by the authorities here in Austria. It is an extremely standardized product under GMP criteria. So we are manufacturing under ISO 13485, which is, um, which is uh, a certification for IVD um, and, uh, uh, and uh, many other um, many other substances. It is a documented shelf life. Uh, we have lyophilized it and that makes it even more stable and then you can transport it in an, uh, under room temperature. And we have an extremely body of science coming uh, with this product. So if you look, for example, to macrophages, I told you this is going into macrophages and is going to activate it. You can believe it or not, but we have proven it. And if you have a maximum stimulation of macrophages with lipopolysaccharide, which is uh, the known strongest, uh, uh, strongest motivator for macrophages to activate, you see after, uh, after um, um, giving immuno D to macrophages, it has an even higher activation potential than uh, the maximum that is known at the moment. And if you look to the distribution, so we always want to know what kind of macrophages are we producing? Are we producing the suppressing or are we producing the phagocytizing uh, macrophages, which is 
called the M1 macrophage and the suppressing is the M2 macrophage. And with the LPS, you have a production of superoxide anion, which is a sign for M2 macrophages, the suppressing, which we don't want to have, uh, especially in cancer therapy. So if you just add debinding protein to it, there is an elevation of uh, superoxide generation and uh, inactivation. And if you put immuno D, the vitamin D bound debinding protein co uh, complex, then you have an even higher, uh, even higher activation and a lower uh, superoxide anion radical production, which means if you look to the ratio, then you have much lower production of uh, M2 macrophages, the suppressing, than the activation. And that might be um, a good hint why immuno D is acting so good, for example, in cancer. Um, additionally, we, could, we are now able to add immuno D to normal immune cells and look to the surface, uh, the surface proteins, which are uh, CD45, CD85, CD123. And you see, if you give immuno D to an aliquot of the sample, the expression of these immune receptors on the cells are rising. This is something that can only be done if you have a vit water-soluble vitamin D. Otherwise, these experiments were not able to be done. And this is now the proof that vitamin D is doing something with our, even with the expression of proteins on the surface of our immune cells. And uh, if you look, for example, to the ratio of uh, CD85 80, uh, and 123, then you see after 12 hours incubation, you have a much higher expression of these uh, immune receptors on the surface of the cells. The same can be seen if you just uh, incubate uh, vitamin D uh, to, to cells of tumor patients. At the, um, at the beginning, between control patients, so absolutely normal patients and tumor patients, you don't see a difference in the activation of CD16, which is the activation mark marker on the surface of macrophages. And after incubation of six hours, you have a highly significant bigger expression of this activation marker on the surface of macrophages. And then the question is, where does the immunod land? So here we have, uh, we have our cells, we have our granulocytes and macrophages on one side and here uh, and on the uh, on the right side you can see where the immuno d is distributed to it is distributed to cd16 positive cells and mainly to cd14 plus 16 double positive cells so this is where the immuno d is docking to the cells so this is only macrophages. So is this interesting? Yes, it is interesting because macrophages are the initial, um, uh, the initial cell line who is doing, um, who is doing the, our immune response. But we also should have a look to T cells. And if we look to T cells, for example, after six hours of incubation, you have a much higher expression of cytotoxic cells, cytotoxic T cells, and you find the immuno D on the surface of this cytotoxic T cells. This is very interesting. Another part of the cells 
that we are carrying is CD8 and CD4 positive cells. Well, maybe you know this uh, for HIV. Um, HIV uh, in HIV, you have uh, um, you have to count the CD4 and CD8 cells uh, to see if there is enough immune uh, Im immune activity uh, for them to have a normal life. What is not really recognized is that there are uh, that there is a population of cells is called CD8, CD4 double positive uh, cells, and you see that in the gate two G2. There is a population where uh, these cells are uh, can be found. And is this interesting? Yes, it is getting more and more interesting because uh, since September 2017, and this is quite recent, we have an insight into double positive T cells for CD4 and 8. And you find them more in infectious diseases like HIV, chronic hepatitis, Chagas disease, in cancer like cutaneous T cell lymphoma, in melanoma, in breast cancer, and in autoimmune diseases like uh, um, rheumatoid uh, arthritis, for example. Uh, and this has either um, activating or breaking, so reducing uh, activity. So this is more or less the control of our T cell reaction. And if you put, um, if if you have a normal cell count, yeah, you see that the that the um, the population of CD4, CD8 double positive cells is significantly higher in tumor patients. So there is an arlet. And you can even enhance this just by incubate an aliquot for about six hours uh, in, with these cells and have another highly significant elevation in expression of CD4, CD8 double positive cells, which makes a T cell active uh, or is a sign for active T cell activation if you put immuno D directly to the T cells. And uh, uh, not enough with this, you also have an activation of caspase 3, caspase 9, and cytochrome C, which is the induction cascade for apoptosis. So immuno D is not only activating uh, macrophages and T cells, it also is activating our, uh, our self-killing program for tumor cells, which can be seen if you look into these cells themselves. So if you uh, have immunohistochemistry from samples of tumors, then you see that there is a much higher elevation, for example, in CD45 double, uh, positive cells in the tissue. If you treat this, uh, if you treat these patients directly with injecting immunod into the tumor, and if you if you're injecting that, for example, in prostate prostate cancer, which we did, then you can see from one to the second injection to the third injection, there is not only a reduction. Uh, what you can see in the MRI you can also see the reduction of tumor cells in the tissue, uh, which can be confirmed by biopsy. And additionally, the third proof is you can see that by decreasing the PSA, uh, which is a marker for prostate cancer, after, in, uh, after injection and, uh, of immunod into the prostate cancer. So we have the picture, we have the biopsy, and we have the serum parameters showing that there is a reduction of tumor uh, after uh, direct injection of immunod into human cancers. So this can be uh, th this can uh, can be uh, uh, followed up by our 
um, by our papers that we have recently uh, published. And uh, um, therefore, we uh, are stating that uh, ImmunoD CLS supports the natural, uh, natural defense uh, for uh, the immune system. And then uh, we asked the, our colleagues to do independently uh, another series of uh, experiments with ImmunoD and uh, the European Institute of Oncology, which is a well-known and renowned um, institute, did some, uh, did some uh, experiments for us independently and the, they have a preclinical model of melanoma and of breast cancer and i show you uh, the results um, of the melan uh, of the melanoma there is a cell line the the mice uh, are infected with this and we treated uh, the mice with a dose of uh, 12 units and 50 units either intravenously or directly injected into the tumor. And after implanting the melanoma cells on day 11, 14, 17, and 19, there was a treatment either with 12 units or with 50 units of um, ImmunoD, either intravenously or into the tumor. And what you can see is a highly significant difference in tumor growth and um, this can both be seen either in intravenous application or intratumoral application. And there is a significant reduction in tumor weight in these mice. And of course, there is um, um, a longer survival of treated mice, either IV or intratumorally. So this is uh, mouse model proof that uh, both administrations should be effective. And uh, uh, to, uh, to make this measurable, even if you have patients, um, if you have patients uh, under treatment, there is a serum parameter called CCL5, which is the ligand of uh, CD14 which I have uh, shown you before. And in cancer, you find um, more or less tenfold higher um, expression of uh, this CCL5, or you find the uh, much higher value in the serum. And uh, um, CCL5 is also called run test. And that's, this, can be, uh, this can be run as a normal uh, serum parameter in uh, many laboratories. And if you, uh, so we have this difference uh, in normal cancer patients. And if you look at uh, the values after treatment of the mice, you see that there is a reduction in CCL5 uh, even in the serum parameters. So we have longer life, we have lower tumor load, we have um, we have a better, uh, and we can measure it uh, not only with the tumor weight, we can measure it uh, with serum parameters. And therefore, um, therefore, we have a triple proof that this uh, administration is really working. So what does ImmunoD in autism? Um, so that autism is connected to immunological processes, even in younger kids. Uh, this is something that I have been, uh, I have been shown before. And uh, um, we have the ImmunoD, which, uh, um, which is proven uh, a dietary supplement. Uh, and we have uh, published uh, our pre uh, preliminary results or our results together with our colleagues from uh, uh, the US. And what I want to show you is uh, what we found out. So we have, uh, we had 140 kids uh, with confirmed Asperger syndrome um, uh, using ImmunoD and 33 kids were eligible 
for a controlled questionnaire assessment to have um, um, to have a straightforward um, to have a straightforward protocol. The ImmunoD was obtained um, by HD Pharma and uh, applied orally twice per week uh, with one ampule dissolved with one milliliter of water. And uh, the treatment uh, was uh, over five weeks. Um, so in the first group, we had 12 kids examined with the University Cambridge uh, uh, AQ uh, questionnaire. And uh, um, 21 kids were uh, surveyed with a PPD assessment scale. Um, in group uh, in group one, uh, you have this Cambridge AQ10 questionnaire. This is um, more or less uh, um, uh, not very sophisticated, but uh, let's say for us easy to perform, um, uh, easy to perform studies. We have had uh, ten boys and uh, two girls in this group, and uh, um, interestingly. After supplementation for five weeks, we had a reduction in the AQ10 score um, in, uh, in these groups. Um, additionally, um, the Asperger syndrome questionnaire, um, the short form showed more or less the same results um, and uh, measured um, um, radical oxidative stress parameters like uh, uh, HAE or MDA uh, also showed that it, there is a reduction in oxidative, oxidative stress in the serum of the patients, uh, which correlates uh, to the results of the behavior scores. And uh, this can be shown additionally with another parameter from the blood. Uh, um, this is called lipid peroxides. Uh, so we have a reduction of oxidative stress and uh, a betterment in, uh, a betterment in uh, uh, behavior. So group one demonstrated a decrease of the cumulative score points. Um, and a mean decrease of uh, 6.3 points, um, or the, the standard deviation was relatively high. Uh, we found a statistically diff uh, statistic difference of um, highly significant. And in group two, we, um, we, we had uh, uh, this PDD assessment scale, um, of course, Vitamin D serum levels were elevated after the treatment of five uh, of five weeks, which is remarkable. Um, normally, it takes half a year, at least up to one year, to raise the vitamin D level. With immuno D, you have an immediately uh, immediately supply of vitamin D. <coughs> And nitrothyrosine phosphate, which is another marker for uh, oxidative stress, was significantly lower in, um, uh, after treatment in this group. Sa uh, same for malone D aldehyde. Um, and uh, the ASD value before and after differed significantly, so there was a betterment uh, in, uh, in the behavior. After all, we have a mean decrease uh, from 134 to 102 points, which was highly significant. Um, uh, we had a main difference in points, uh, a mean dif uh, difference in points of 31. Um, and the overall results of these two studies is 50% of all cases um, had a downsizing group shift. 10% of all kids had a decrease of two groups. 40% of only one group, uh, which, which is remarkable too, to my mind. And 20% of the responsive kids 
uh, had a downshift from severe ISD to mild ISD, which might be uh, very interesting, especially for the parents. And 20% from severe to moderate ASD. 60% had a reduction from moderate to mild ISD. Um, so after all, the reduction of severe ISD to no ISD, no ASD measured with this assessment score after three weeks um, was seen in one kit, with, which was really um, very remarkable even for us to see. Um, and uh, the end result from the questionnaire shows a slight rise to 55 points, which leads to the classification into the mild group after five weeks from really severe. Um, this could be also measured by the uh, MIMOP symptom score, which is a patient or here in this case, a parent's symptom score where the parents are asked how they feel uh, uh, or how, yes, how they feel that the symptoms are um, after before and after treatment. So it is a patient centered um, patient centered symptom score. And here we have also a significant reduction from 15 to 10.2 um, in the MIMOP symptom score. And uh, if uh, you are interested, I can show you a few slides about our, let's say, current research because of the pandemic situation. What we know is that vitamin D supplementation could possibly improve clinical outcomes in patients infected with uh, COVID-19. And there are several studies, uh, there is a huge amount of studies um, showing that vitamin D has an important role and patients who uh, receiving a severe or critical infection uh, and, la uh, and end up on ICU words have significant reduction of vitamin D. So uh, if this is uh, vitamin D um, absor uh, uh, vi vitamin D deficiency caused by uh, low levels of vitamin D at the beginning of the disease, or if they are, or if they need the vitamin D. For the, immune, uh, for the immune system is not clear at the moment, but uh, I think a mixture of both um, is the best explanation for that. So vitamin D and COVID, if you look to the literature, and this is one of the, uh, one of the latest uh, publications, this is a meta-analysis, a systemic review and meta-analysis has been published in the British Medical Journal which is uh, a highly, highly ranked and well-known and uh, well-established um, medical, uh, medical paper. Even if you look to Yale University uh, Press, there is, in this systemic review, if, uh, it was found that there is an inversely correlation between vitamin, uh, vitamin D status and the mortality, uh, mortality rate um, 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 in COVID-19 patients. And uh, we also could prove that, so we have, uh, we have taken um, the ImmunoD, which has the ingredient, uh, the Cedeprovit. Cedeprovit is uh, the major ingredient in vitamin, uh, in ImmunoD. And uh, uh, we added our alpha H, which is a combination of alpha ketoglutarate, 5 hydroxymethylfurfural, and some other ingredients, and could show that uh, uh, there is a complete recovery um, after 48 hours after application, even if you give it for, for, to a seven month old baby or a 1.5 year old toddler, or um, uh, or um, normal adults, you've, uh, you find a 
complete reduction of the symptoms um, after administration. And uh, this can be shown here. If you administer it, you first see that the fever is going down, then, uh, then uh, uh, the activity status uh, is, uh, is going down, which means you're more active. Um, then breathing problems are reduced, and uh, this all happens within several hours after the beginning of the treatment. And at the moment, we have uh, more than uh, more than fifty patients under treatment, uh, and the publication is on the way. So we are very happy to announce that uh, we have might have something um, for treatment. Um, of uh, um, of COVID-19 and uh, uh, we now have all the ethical committee uh, approvals for starting a double blind placebo control uh, a random, a randomized trial and are just waiting for getting patients for this uh, but unfortunately many patients are blocked on the ICU ward and in the hospitals because uh, other studies are performed with these patients. So hopefully we can start our, uh, our control trial as soon as possible. So thank you very much for, uh, for your patience to listen, to listen to me. I hope I could give you a little insight into our work about ImmunoD, our work uh, with ImmunoD and autism and all of uh, this research is going on and uh, um, i hope uh, that we can deliver some more uh, informative data very soon in, in very soon hopefully very soon yes uh, thank you so much ralph your presentation was extremely interesting to me as well i'm very interested in vitamin d especially the also the cancer part I must admit, we received quite a few questions, so I hope you can maybe help us, uh, well, answer them if you can, please. Uh, first question I would like to ask you regarding the immune D therapy. Uh, do you uh, actually test the children's uh, vitamin D status in the serum before you give them the therapy? If so, when do you decide to give this therapy? Uh, also, what is the dosaging of the therapy and how long does it take and how is it administered? Is it orally given or intramuscularly? So this is yeah. the first question. Uh, that's, this is the first question. Good. Maybe I, I did not uh, uh, make, it clear, make it clear enough uh, in, in my presentation. So um, we started uh, a randomized, uh, we started uh, our trial. Um, and uh, checked uh, vitamin D levels before and after five weeks of treatment with the uh, ImmunoD. So the ImmunoD ATSM is a special product specially developed for autistic kids because we know um, these kids need um, more or less high, higher amounts of vitamin D, but they don't swallow everything. So has to be a little bit sweet. They uh, should love it. And therefore, the recipe is, uh, um, is a, a solid, our soluble ImmunoD with 200 uh, units of, uh, of ImmunoD um, can be absorbed by the buccal mucosa. You just give in one milliliter and say, OK, let's leave it in. And uh, maybe you give some sweets uh, with it. And then it stays inside and is absorbed within, uh, within, let's say, two to five minutes. And we measured vitamin D levels before and after five weeks of treatment. And we administered ImmunoD twice per week. So um, I okay. hope I answered your question. Maybe yes. Okay. Confused. Yes. So no, no, no. It's okay. Vitamin D was measured before and after. We have okay. seen an elevation of vitamin D, a significant elevation of vitamin D after the treatment. It was an oral administration twice per week, one milliliter, tastes sweet, and um, uh, the, the amount was 400 units per week. 400 international units? 
Uh, you can't compare. Uh, no, okay. You can't compare Immuno D with international. You, okay. You just, <clears throat> this is the trick. Okay. Uh, because it is water soluble, if you have the normal vitamin D, then more than 99%, because it's lipophilic, more than 99% are not absorbed. So it takes long time for uh, for uh, absorption the into the body. Mm. The water soluble combination of vitamin D is able to be absorbed relatively quickly and you need extremely low uh, amounts of vitamin D and uh, 200 units immuno D are normally 200 international units of vitamin D but because of the special formula and the connection to the D binding protein you are absorbing this much much better than um, the normal lipophilic uh, vitamin D, and therefore it is equal, but of course of the uh, formulation it is not equal. Yes, I guess the pharmacokinetics are different. Of yes, the preparations. Ex okay. So uh, another question from a parent is uh, they are very interested in this therapy, and their question is how to approach to the pediatrician or a GP asking them for the therapy because a lot of uh, doctors are not really aware of this immuno D so okay. they, uh, they 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 want to find a way how to let the doctor know that this could be a good therapy maybe there is uh, references they can read the doctors and how to let the doctors and the professionals know yeah well we have a, a more or less large amount of uh, literature about uh, about uh, uh, vitamin D vitamin D in our autism and uh, with immuno D ATSM specially. So if some uh, if somebody is interested, he can um, he can find this literature either by just googling our work um, and uh, uh, if this is not possible, you can go to our website, contact us, us and uh, we can provide our literature uh, okay. in uh, let's say a little bundle. Is this, uh, is this immuno D uh, um, uh, preparation that it's, it requires a prescription or can, is, can they buy it as an OTC? No, it is a dietary supplement, registered dietary supplement, um, and you can just buy it uh, um, as an OTC. Yes, OTC, and okay. you can buy it di directly from our, uh, or you can get it directly from our website. Okay, and also immuno D, can it be used for people with uh, all, um, autoimmune diseases? Yes, but, uh, yes, definitely. And this is something that I was, try uh, I was trying to explain. So vitamin D has several, um, several functions in our body. And uh, um, uh, maybe it is wise not to influence the body with something from outside uh, to make it move into this or that direction. Maybe it is better to give him all the possibilities to defeat them with our own inborn mechanisms, which have been working for uh, for m more than a million years. And this is the reason why we are still on Earth. So why not using our uh, good working mechanisms by just supplying them with the right amount or with a good amount of uh, needed substances? Exactly. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Those are the questions mainly that we wanted to ask you. Thank you, Professor Al Kevin. And thank you once again that the, I got the opportunity to hop in. You see, at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, it, is, <laughs> it is uh, White. Really, really getting nice. Okay, so enjoy, it, enjoy, the, enjoy the snow, please. <laughs> thank you. It okay. looks like Christmas. <laughs> Take care. See you yeah? soon. Hopefully. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.